Welcome. In this session, we are going to talk about tumors of the lacrimal gland and masses in the lacrimal gland fossa or lacrimal gland enlargement can be due to inflammation or tumors. Inflammation of the lacrimal gland is called lacryoadenitis and the patient with lacrimal gland inflammation will present with pain and redness in the lacrimal gland region. Lacrimal gland inflammation can be due to sarcoidosis, IgG4 related disease and Sjogren syndrome. NSOI or non-specific orbital inflammation is a diagnosis of exclusion and we have discussed these entities in the session on orbital inflammation. Majority of tumors in the lacrimal gland force are lymphoid tumors and only a minority are epithelial tumors. Lymphoid tumors we have discussed in the previous session and here we are going to discuss about the epithelial tumors. Among the epithelial tumors, 50% are benign tumors and are known as benign mixed tumors or pleomorphic adenoma. The other 50% of epithelial tumors of the lacrimal gland are malignant tumors and half of the malignant tumors are adenoid cystic carcinoma. The remaining malignant tumors can be mucoepidermoid carcinomas, squamous carcinomas, malignant mixed tumors and primary adenocarcinomas. Cysts can also occur in the lacrimal gland. On imaging, inflammation of the lacrimal gland and lymphoid tumors of the lacrimal gland causes enlargement of the lacrimal gland in an elongated shape. And in these situations, the lacrimal gland enlargement molds around the globe without indenting the globe. We have described molding in the previous session when we discussed lymphoid tumors. Epithelial tumors tend to enlarge the lacrimal gland in a globular shape with indentation and displacement of the adjacent globe and long-standing slow-growing benign tumors can cause remodeling of bone. Pleomorphic adenoma is a benign tumor of the lacrimal gland and it is the most common epithelial tumor of the lacrimal gland. It most commonly involves the orbital lobe of the lacrimal gland and only occasionally involves the palpebral lobe of the lacrimal gland. And it is called pleomorphic because on histopathological sections it appears to contain both epithelial and mesenchymal elements but both the epithelial and mesenchymal elements which we see on histopathological section arise from epithelium. Pleomorphic adenomas usually present between 4 to 5 decades of life and the clinical features of pleomorphic adenoma includes fullness of the upper lid as we see here and a slowly developing painless proptosis with inferomedial displacement of the globe. So the characteristics of pleomorphic adenoma of the lacrimal gland is a history of more than one year's duration and absence of pain. A firm lobular mass can be palpated near the superotemporal orbital rim. On imaging we find a well circumscribed tumor indenting and displacing the globe and the tumor may be slightly nodular. As we have mentioned, a long-standing benign slow-growing tumor can cause remodeling of the adjacent bone, but there will be no bony destruction. On imaging, the lesion may contain cysts and calcified areas, and on MRI, it appears hypointense on T1-weighted images and hyperintense on T2-weighted images as compared to muscle. So when a patient presents with a mass lesion in the lacrimal gland fossa with a history of more than one year, and without any pain, a biopsy is contraindicated and only a complete excision of the mass including its pseudocapsule along with a rim of normal orbital tissue should be done because it has been seen that violation of the pseudocapsule during excision of the mass results in recurrence of the tumor with a risk of malignant change and the risk is 10% per decade of life. In histopathological section, we find benign epithelial cell proliferation arranged in ducts, strands and squamous pearls and areas of stromal spindle cells and mixed with varied tissue elements such as mucin, cartilage and osteoid. So on histological section we find both epithelial and stromal tissues but both arise from the epithelium. Adenoid cystic carcinoma is the most common malignant epithelial tumor of the lacrimal gland and average age of presentation is fourth decade of life. It presents as a rapidly growing mass lesion in the lacrimal gland fossa, typically with a history of less than one year duration, usually between three months and six months. It causes globe displacement 
and pain occurs in 40% of patients from perineural invasion and bone destruction. An adenoid cystic carcinoma tends to infiltrate into the posterior orbit. On imaging, we find a pulled defined irregular infiltrating lesion which extends along the lateral wall of the orbit towards the orbital apex. Calcified areas may be found within the tumor and the tumor causes destruction of adjacent bones as seen here. On MRI, the lesion appears to be heterogeneous, hyperintense in both T1 and T2 weighted images. On histopathology section, tumor cells of adenoid cystic carcinoma typically appears benign and are arranged in tubules, nests or Swiss cheese pattern. Perineural invasion typical of adenoid cystic carcinoma can also be seen on the histopathology section and the basaloid pattern on the nest has worse prognosis than the cribriform pattern on the Swiss cheese pattern. And this is in contrast to rhabdomyosarcoma where it the cystic alveolar type has a worse prognosis than the embryonal type. Malignant mixed tumor can arise from a pre-existing pleomorphic adenoma or from residual tumor after an incomplete excision of pleomorphic adenoma. So a malignant mixed tumor is the malignant degeneration of a benign mixed tumor or pleomorphic adenoma. And when it arises from a pre-existing pleomorphic adenoma which has not been removed the patient will report a sudden change in growth rate of the tumor signifying malignant change. On histopathology section, the tumor appears to be similar to pleomorphic adenoma but with presence of malignant epithelial cells. Malignant lacrimal gland tumor should be biopsied and this is just the opposite to what should be done in situation of a benign lacrimal gland tumor. And as we have discussed, the two important clinical features which can differentiate a benign from a malignant tumor in the lacrimal gland region is the duration of history and presence of pain. Treatment options for malignant lacrimal gland tumor include exenteration followed by radiotherapy or new adjuvant intraarterial chemotherapy followed by exenteration or globe sparing surgery and then followed by radiotherapy. So here we see a patient with a malignant lacrimal gland tumor whose size has decreased after new adjuvant intraarterial chemotherapy. Prognosis of malignant lacrimal gland tumor is poor because of intracranial extension and distant metastasis which may occur several years after the primary lesion in the lacrimal gland fossa. Thank you for listening.